Hi, Dan here on Saturday, March 22nd, and in this video, uh, I want to look at the Biotech Index, um, the IBB. Look, this thing really took it on the chin. This has been an outperformer for so long, and um, we've got these key buy points. It seemed like every time the thing hit the 50-day moving average, um, it was a time to buy. We even saw that. Um, I think this would have been Monday or Friday, the uh, prior week, something like that. Anyway, we saw that. If in the past, you know, you do this, typical deal, buy near support, keep a tight stop, buy near support, keep a tight stop, buy near support once it's established here. You know, you don't just buy because the stock hit the 50-day moving average. Oh, buy. No, that's, if only trading were that easy, um, we'd all be millionaires. Um, but you wait for signs of support. You wait for the sign that somebody else is jumping out of their foxhole first. You say, dude, I'm behind you all the way. Go. Um, when you're the first one out, you tend to get the Medal of Honor posthumously, so you don't want to be doing that. Uh, but anyway, so every time the stock would pull back and then bounce was a great buying opportunity. What you do after that, with it after that, that's not the subject of this video. Um, but if that had happened here, then you keep a tight stop and you're out. Now, by the way, if you haven't sold, you did this. Look, it's down um, 5%, we'll say. Okay, it's not like the stock or here, the, you know, the ETF. It's not like it just got crushed here and now we're saying like, oh, golly gee, you know, oh, if I'd only used my stops. I'm just talking about a general principle here as far as trading that you want to use protective stops um, and they're easier to use and more profitable to use. And listen to me because I'm giving you pearls here. They're easier to use and more profitable to use when you buy right. When you buy right at established support. The reason being because you have a better idea of where the stock needs to go in order for you to declare, oops, I'm wrong. So if you're buying at the 50-day moving average like you did here, okay, stop didn't get hit, stop didn't get hit. Um, if you waited, who knows, maybe you bought here, oops, stop got hit. Maybe you bought here, stop, got hit, whatever. Uh, but you get my point. If you're buying it, and even, even if that was the case, by the way, you take a small loss. Okay, if you can't take small losses, then you should not be trading. Um, if you can take big losses, then you should not be trading either. So you want to embrace these small losses. Um, so look, if you'd bought the stock here, trades down, you're out, even if you're in. My suggestion, get out. Look at the volume here. This was massive volume, and it all had to do with, um, well, had to do with a lot of different things. First of all, look at the move here. So I think, you know, traders are going to be skittish anyway. You know, all good things do come to an end. But here, um, there's something, uh, what was it, um, Congress, uh, you got to just stay away from this. Congress is opening some investigation on Gilead, um, some house probe on the pricing of Sovaldi, this hep C drug that they have, which apparently is really effective. And really kind of the question is, is, is isn't this drug, even though it's priced $80 bazillion, um, isn't it still more cost effective than getting a new liver? So, but that's not the, I, you know, it's not the issue here. I'm all for drug companies lowering their drug uh, drugs to make them more affordable. I like that idea. Um, but here, the market doesn't because it looks beyond this, it looks beyond Gilead and looks at all these other ex expensive um, stock, or other expensive drugs put out by other companies. By the way, it's not a policy discussion it's just a fact a lot of the research and development that that companies do is totally crappy oka i mean their drugs don't amount to anything so they put all this money into um, research and it doesn't yield any benefits um, so you know they got to make their money somewhere again that's not in defense of a drug i think this is like two hundred thousand dollars or something like that might be eight hundred thousand i don't know uh, it's not in the defense of that it's just saying you know with respect to these biotech companies just keep in mind they ain't hitting grand slams um 
With that said, I think these are going to be under further distribution in um, the sector spotlight in the uh, strategy, or excuse me, in the weekend update for members. I'm going to go through them. I've got like 12 of these stocks that I want you to look at. Um, some of them are ditch, um, some of them are hold. So anyway, we'll go through that in the strategy session uh, or in the sector spotlight. But the bottom line is this, when you see this kind of volume spike, on a key break of resistance or of support, excuse me, I don't know why I got like verbal dyslexia today. When you see this kind of volume on a break of key support, not only just this last low, but also the 50 day moving average, which is held several times, um, this is something that you want to stay away from. So the bottom line is this, the glory days of biotech are over. Get creative and find something else. This group could rest for weeks or months. I think this trade is over. The risk is high if you're going to be buying these stocks now because, again, I think the trade is over. Now, does that mean that I'm saying you need to be shorting these stocks? No, that's an individual choice each person makes, and it's very, very chart specific. What I'm saying is I know there's a lot of biotechians out there. There better be because you've made a boatload of money on buying and holding biotech. But at some point, you know, the last keg of beer is tapped and it's time to leave the party. And I think it's time to leave the party. Okay, uh, members, over to the weekend update. I've got uh, some of your requests from the forum as well as, again, a sector spotlight on some of these biotech stocks. I'll see you there.